Welcome back to our video series. My name is Justin Noonan. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Aruba Switching. With me again is Kamal Takodra, who's going to go into more detail on UI groups and the multi-editor in Central. Kamal? Thanks, Justin. So we're back here again at the UI or the GUI config editor for this specific group. So as part of this, we have something on the top left that I haven't really mentioned, which is the multi edit button. So I'm going to go across and toggle that multi edit. And that brings us to a different view inside Aruba Central. And it lists the devices within that group. We've only got the one group here. So I'm going to click on that. When I click on that device, I get a pop-up window in the bottom right, which gives me a view config, edit config, and express config. Well, first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to view the configuration. What this does, it brings our multi-editor to view the current configuration of that specific group. Now, as you can see, it's just like the CLI um, that we're all familiar with in terms of for CX. So we can see it's a VSF stack. Um, it's got the VLANs that I configured earlier. And then at the bottom of the uh, configuration, you'll see the um, contact details and the DNS that I added on there. So this multi-editor effectively is like the CLI style of configuration and it takes it ro its roots from our other tool which is called NetEdit. So some of you will be familiar with NetEdit and can see content on NetEdit through uh, various channels. So, um, although multi edit isn't exactly like NetEdit, it does take its roots from there. So that's just a view config effectively, but really what we want to do is be able to use NetEdit to carry out configuration. So I'm going to click again on this um, device and I'm going to go to the edit config um, button and that will bring up our editor view basically now the editor really is semi-intelligent in terms of um, you can put in the configuration and it will automatically help you in terms of contextual and put it in the right position for instance i give an example i want to add some config so i just click in the shell and hit return so once I've clicked in the shell and I've hit return, I just uh, can add my configuration. I'll say I want to add a VLAN. So if I put VL, what happens is you can see there's a pop-up window and that pop-up window effectively, we can see it's offering me VLAN or virtual Mac. So I'm just going to go with VLAN. I could tab into that. Now I hit the space bar and it gives me the various options in the pop-up window here. We can see... Um, I'm going to go for um, a couple of VLANs here. So I'm going to just go to 105 and 106. And once I've done that, well, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I, should, I hit the return. Now notice uh, before I hit the return, I'm at line three at the moment. So if I hit return, um, just after a few moments, you can see that the config is now pushed down to line 26 here so um, that's useful in terms of its contextual help and it helps you put the configuration anywhere really in the right place although you can put it anywhere so next thing uh, I decide I want to put a bit of uh, routing or routing in there so um, let's go with that so I'll go router and when I do that the Again, the pop-up configuration comes up and puts the suggestions in. I'm going to go for router and then I'm going to hit the space bar. Once I hit the space bar, again, I get all the other options and uh, I'm going to go for some OSPF here. So I go OSPF. Again, there's a pop-up window still saying there's some more options, but I only want to go with OSPF uh, 
for uh, IPv4. Then it gives me my, uh, again, my options in terms of OSPF processes. So let's go for OS, OSPF process two, and then I'm gonna hit the return. And what happens is actually the OSPF is now pushed down in the right position in the config, and you can see it's now at line 444. Um, then I can, I want to put some more parameters into the OSPF. I want to put it into the backbone area, area zero. So I just hit the space bar. I want to hit the space bar. You've got to be used to it. It's about hitting the space bar and finding out what the options are in the multi-editor. Now I'm just going to put in the area that I'm interested in. I want area um, zero. So I'm just going to put area zero. Again, the pop-up windows carry on helping you through the context hit area zero and hit return and that's it. So that's the, the configuration I'm happy with. I've added my two changes. Now I could go straight across and save my changes and that really um, would be good enough. But we also have this diff view. So I click on the diff view. When I go into diff view, um, you, it basically gives me the running config and the potential candidate config for this group. Now, if you look, I've got a couple of limey green markers uh, in the config, and that's indicating that I've got some changes somewhere at the top-ish of the config and somewhere near the bottom. All I need to do is click on those markers and there it takes me to that VLAN configuration that I added. Happy with that. Um, for my candidate config, nothing uh, really um, onerous about that. I, I could have added some extra stuff in here, but this is just for a demo really. So uh, that's good enough for me. So, uh, and then I can, um, I was just wanting to mention, you could see there's a little bit of a screen here to show this is the part of the screen you're in. And that's the marker that signifies that config. So I want to go to the last part of the config where I've made the change to check. And that's where the OSPF is. Again, the sort of screen moves along with it. We see that's where the uh, OSPF configuration is. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and save the config. Once it saves the configs, it drops us back out and you can see we've got a message that we are pushing the config now to the device or the devices in that group. So um, we can go and take a look at that config again. Uh, let's just quick have a quick look by uh, in the view config. So let's go to view the config. We should see that that will have pushed it. Um, so if I go quickly down we can see the two vlans that we added uh, are there and then if i go pretty much to the bottom we can see that the ospf has been um, added and uh, pushed inside that config on the database but if we uh, go back and uh, we can see that's all synced so i'm pretty confident that uh, that config is synced up and we've used the multi-editor. So really that effectively um, really closes out things for me in terms of I've showed some of the onboarding, how you can use UI groups, how you need to move the switches from the default group to the UI to the to the group that you've configured for the GUI slash UI. And then obviously we've gone into the multi-edit element where we can do a much more advanced part of configurations and really go to town in terms of putting as complex configurations as you want, similar to as you can do with templates, but really with a much easier front end uh, that some of our customers have been asking for. So Justin, hopefully that gives you a great overview of what we're doing. Um, doing so far with the GUI and the UI. That helps a lot. It seems that this provides a point and click way of deploying switch configurations and requirements. So one more question for me. When you selected multi-edit there, there was an express config option. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, that's right, Justin. We use the GUI as an alternative way to set up CX 
switches and it's great for simple deployments and then the multi-editor config can let us get even deeper into the switch and access all the parameters that are available on the CX switch. So yeah, let's uh, quickly go into the express config and explain that to you too. So um, if I click on the um, device again, you can see in the pop-up we have the express config option. So let me just click on the express config. And what pops up is really what we're saying are co really common things that people uh, that we see our customers deploy. In this case, it's a Aruba AP profile. We can enable it. Uh, we can select if it's an access to trunk. We can change the VLAN and the PoE priority as well as uh, allowing jumbo frames. So it's a simple way to effectively create a template for your group and push it into that group currently we only have one express config today uh, but we as central rolls out in next iterations we will see more happening around the express config so this is the first um, show of express config as well as the uh, device profile here we also have the network analytics engine so we can deploy an NAE script effectively into that device for local monitoring. So at the moment we have five NAE scripts that we can um, deploy. So in fact, say for instance, I want to select the hardware device monitor. I just uh, put in the agent name, I'll just call that demo, and then if I wanted to deploy it, I'd just hit save and that would uh, deploy it. So really, Justin, that's uh, Express Config in, in a nutshell. So hopefully that was clear for you and that's really all I wanted to show you today. Thanks, Kamal, for that. that really a good description and overview of how to use the multi-editor and UI groups. I think this really helps with integrating our AOS CX switching products into Aruba Central and simplifies our network management with uh, our CX platforms. Thank you everyone for tuning in.